Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Columbine. Today we enter an extraordinarily beautiful section. Um, I would just speak for a few moments on poetry, because I have read hundreds of poetry, uh, hundreds of poets, and thousands of poems. And I have never read such beautiful poetry. You have composed also, this year. you should add. Um, hundreds we, of poems, that, beautiful that we, poems. We yeah. can pass on. Okay. <laughs> and in these lines that you will hear tonight, you will hear such and feel such beauty that it, it transcends all that we have known in Western poetry. And Sri Aurobindo declared himself first as a poet. Yes. He said, first, I am a poet. And that will come through so beautifully. And least of all a philosopher, <laughs> which yes. people insisted yes. on making him. Oh, I don't know. Politics also, yes, but not he said, they, they have made me into a philosopher. <laughs> oh, I lost yeah. my place. Well, it's page, uh, page 351. 351. Okay. So shall I read the first few lines and then when yes. spring comes, maybe, you know. Very good. Yeah. Yes. So we have seen these two seasons pass by. The summer and rain. Now comes a little somber mood, because now it has vast. So the same thing which we are discussing, you know, the purification process, which is the longest and the most painful in yoga. And if somebody is not ready, wants a quick success, five-year course and get nirvana or two weeks uh, special training and get something, one is just fooling oneself, that's all. All genuine yoga takes time, you know. I am reminded of this uh, story from Prashna Upanishad. So there are these seers, already seers, who, who have some knowledge or vision of truth and they come to Rishi Pipalad and they want to know more. <laughs> so what does Pipalad say? He doesn't start. He says, you live here for one year and practice, you know, true spirit of yoga. He uses other words. And then when, after one year, if you are ready and what I can, what I can tell you, I'll surely tell you. So he also says there may be things you may ask, which I may not know, but after one year. So one year they stay. And for the ashram also this used to be and still is one of the things that for one year just take roots. Don't try to do anything. Just get rooted. Many people know about it. And if you start throwing roots after staying for some time, then, you know, one is getting ready. But it's still four years before you can become an ashram. Ah, that's, of course, a different thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure in the God's register, the name is written much earlier. But nevertheless, it's important for us to have firm ground. And the firm ground is peace and equanimity. So we'll continue. Earth's mood now changed. She lay in lull repose. The hours went by with slow, contented tread. A wide and tranquil air remembered peace. Earth was the comrade of a happy sun. So after going through this process, there is a release of certain amount of peace and joy. It's not yet the ultimate thing, <laughs> but at least one reaches this poise, steady poise. A calmness neared as of the approach of God. The sign that the divine is near us is not visions and voices. Repeatedly, Sri speaks about it, mm. Mother speaks about it, Amrita speaks about it. It's, the sign is a growing calm, a growing peace, and later on a growing joy. Then there are many other things which come. In peace and silence, the, the eternal, eternal manner, acts. manifest. Let nothing disturb you. And the eternal will manifest. <coughs> Even this is regarded as the highest point of traditional yes. yogas. 
a light of musing trance lit soil and sky and an identity and ecstasy filled <coughs> filled meditation's solitary heart so you feel the touch of this heavens upon our earthly life touch is even during rain but it's a little <laughs> too much of a touch <laughs> so now one is ready for the higher touch a dream loitered in the dumb mind of space time opened its chambers of felicity an exaltation entered and the hope so next to peace and calm is state of joy felicity it is all these have different use felicity is different joy is different happiness is different uh, ananda is different bliss ecstasy is different there are all shades of difference and of course we know pleasure is different so <laughs> that is the <laughs> lowest on the grade so an exaltation entered and a hope an inmost self looked up to a heavenlier height an inmost thought kindled a hidden flame and the inner sight adored an unseen sun so it comes through these trickles it is not yet seen but you feel the presence is near so you adore it and when people ask you arvind but sir um, these are just some spiritual feelings etc he says if you start shutting your doors to these initial preliminary experiences mm -hmm. and uh, with doubt and other things then you are closing a door so you should be grateful even to feel the presence so this is how the steps of yoga carve themselves three thoughtful seasons passed with shining tread and scanning one by one the pregnant hours watched for a flame that lurked in luminous depths the vigil of some mighty birth to come so it is still not born it takes long for the psychic being to emerge so many people want it immediately and it takes years it's and even then the full emergence takes a much longer time so one has to be very very patient it's not like some magical experience which you know gets by some breathing exercises or some meditation exercises they give us a feel good factor but for the psychic being to emerge takes long really long mother has at one place said 30 years so people were very surprised 30 years it carries on i mean if you have striven for 20 years in the last life at least it adds on in some way and assists the process but it takes time and in those in whom it takes place suddenly or early it means the homework has been done in a previous life autumn led in the glory of her moons and dreamed in the splendor of her lotus pools and winter and dew time laid their calm cool hands on nature's bosom still in a half sleep and deepened with hues of lax and mellow ease the tranquil beauty of the waning year so the whole thing is passing it's very a tranquil state a calm state there is a kind of inner felicity and the sense of an inner presence which is not yet seen there is hope no more doubts cross the mind so all this happens and then one is ready for that great birth when spring an ardent lover leaped through leaves and caught the earth bride in his eager clasp His advent was a fire of iris hues. His arms were a circle of the arrival of joy. His voice was a call to the transcendent sphere, whose secret touch upon our mortal lives keeps ever new the thrill that made the world, remolds an ancient sweetness to new shapes, and guards intact. unchanged by death and time the answer of our hearts to nature's charm and keeps forever new yet still the same the throb 
that ever wakes to the old delight. So there is a emergence of sweetness, the sense of beauty and joy all around in nature, in everything, in every movement, because even the physical nature starts experiencing the touch. So all these are the various experiences Shodhana is describing so beautifully through the changing moods of earth. We can use the word earth nature. <laughs> so either which way. Yes. And yes, yes, of course. Next slide. Okay, I've lost it again. And beauty, page 352. And beauty and rapture and the joy to live. His coming brought the magic and the spell. At his touch, life's tired heart grew glad and young. So, in yoga, because it's a long journey, it's very important to keep this state of cheerfulness. Um, and it, it comes only after it. there is a sufficient amount of purification. Otherwise, people halfway through start going into depression, despair. Uh, they leave it halfway. They say, oh, it's too difficult. Oh, people are bad. Circumstances. Always there is something which is not good except oneself. Uh, and <laughs> then well, I am bad makes it even worse. So it adds to the misery. Very difficult to say which is better. But then when the touch comes, then you begin to, everything begins to take a different you. One begins to see what Sri writes in one of his poems, and all discloses the unseen beloved. Yes. So all nature, you know, begins yes. to disclose all around. Sri speaks of it when he was in uh, Alipur jail. So he says that is the time that an eye for beauty opened. Now imagine, <laughs> in Alipur jail, Somebody would say, why God, you have done this to me. So his life is a signing example. But he was into already into yoga. It doesn't matter where you are. That is his first ashram. God made it his twisting ground. And then he says, the eye of beauty opened and he suddenly started seeing beauty of the hideous. And he speaks of it in one of his yes. essays. Beauty of the hideous, beauty of the ugly. Everything is seen as a mask and behind it you begin to see the beauty which we miss. So this is the action of spring. Spring here is that the birth is imminent. The birth of the new consciousness and which the mother embodies. And physically, of course, it's very clear. 21st February is springtime when all the flowers are in bloom. <laughs> <laughs> so everything, uh, when, when divine comes, everything is so symbolically arranged. So we see in Sri Krishna's life, similar way, arrangement that when he is being taken, there is a flood, Yamuna is in spate. Why? Because it's, uh, oh, now it's become restless to touch the Lord. So the Lord has to come out on a little, what is it called, soup <laughs> basket. And as the story goes that Yamuna wants to touch and Vasudev is trying to raise it. The higher it is rising, he is making it, he is thinking he will drown. Then Sri Krishna lowers his feet and Yamuna touches and then begins to recede. So it's it's a very symbolic thing. All nature goes into a heave because it wants to touch the Lord. He okay. He yes. made joy yes. uh, even before that. Yes. His coming brought the magic and the spell. At his touch life's tired heart grew glad and young. He made joy a willing prisoner in her breast. So it doesn't fade away. It's an unfading joy, a willing prisoner. Otherwise it's very fugitive. His grasp was a young god's upon earth's limbs. Changed by the passion of his divine outbreak, he made her body beautiful with his kiss. A body here is matter. Even matter is experiencing they touch that kiss. At the same time, we see what a powerful image it is. Spring is alive and he comes and clasps the earth and makes it beautiful by his kiss. Now, you know, you remember that poem of Sri Krishna, where oh, he speaks yes. of this. He says, all nature is a mute, wide enamored pause. pause, waiting oh. her Lord, hoping her Lord. To clasp, to touch, to clasp, to be. All nature is waiting. Yes. My Lord is going to come. And he is going to clasp me. 
and that needs tremendous degree of just imagine purification in the physical yes. it's not possible because the physical while the higher layers the heart and the mind and the soul are easy to turn toward the divine but these lower ranges they don't they still end up with something very physical and concrete because it doesn't yet know what it means to get the concrete touch of the lord so now we see that impatient for felicity he came high fluting with the coil's happy voice <laughs> his peacock turban trailing on the trees his breath was a warm summons to delight the dense voluptuous azure was his gaze so actually the, he is describing spring mm. but it looks like it's krishna who is around <laughs> you know with his delight <laughs> and playing playing his tricks with us so it looks like that a soft celestial urge surprised the blood rich with the instinct of god's sensuous joy to mark the word sensuous so nothing yes. is excluded from the yoga it's not like one has to kill the senses and dry them up we have to refine and subtleize them and eventually even spiritualize them so people who take up that path of sanyasa where they cut themselves off from everything mm. they are actually not ready for this yoga unless they it's very difficult if they proceeded far along that path that's what the mother says it much better i prefer someone who is in the world and even if he is lost here <laughs> there is hope but for the sanyasi who has cut himself off deliberately it's very difficult because he if he enters back into the world and its play and the touch of the senses he can completely lose himself yes. revealed in beauty a cadence was abroad insistent on the rapture thrill in life immortal movements touched the fleeting hours a godlike packed intensity of sense made it a passionate pleasure even to breathe all sights and voices wove a single charm so it's a very beautiful state when everything reveals some touch or the other of the divine beloved and i have seen people and one of them which i remember so beautifully there was a man called govin bhai in care when i had come initially so he is the one person i have seen for years he never had any complaint so whenever you go and meet him govin bhai kaise so he is the one who taught me by the grace with a smile that's all by the grace and he he would sometimes write something from shirobindo and pass it on to us doctors and then he would remain always happy and he left his body so beautifully without any any illness pain suffering and i'm sure if somebody asked him how did you leave the body he would have said by the grace <laughs> by the grace yes wonderful and many of us have you know experienced these kind of things in people around and when the touch is there our own life had becomes these experiences yeah. with lalubai lalubai i had such experiences and i understood that he went up to sri arbindo's room and he lay died down and died. died yeah oh he just went up cross the threshold <laughs> lay down and died. so there are such amazing instances actually this place has um, such marvelous actually yogis but because it's hidden behind you know there is no show ostentatious net swami ye anand with a big poster because that is show and sham she never encourages that so one may pass by and not know and i have met such marvelous people whose names are also not known facing death so beautifully one person who was he we knew cancer had spread everywhere and you know he was in nursing home for 15 days and on the last day he says Uh, he was not well he was breathing with difficulty so i asked uh, his wife wanted to see him he had told me i don't want to see anyone so i said let me ask so i asked him she wants to see you he said no nothing i just want to be alone with the lord and joyously he sat in meditation at night night means 6 o'clock in the evening he kept sitting at 1:30 suddenly one of the sisters feels like going and seeing and that moment she sees him just do like this it's past away so we hear about rare yogis who leave their body like that and even i have forgotten his name you know such people they are amazing so a god like packed 
intensity of sense, made it a passionate pleasure even to breathe. Yes. All sights and voices wove a single charm. The life of the enchanted globe became a storm of sweetness and of light and song. So that's why when mother was asked about again changing outside, etc. She said, first you change yourself. Then you may discover that there are very few things left to change outside. Because you get a new vision of things. And whole, you know, you will see the working of God. In the, just like Shobindo in the Alipur jail. He says, those whom in our intellectual pride condemn as chote log. <coughs> and he sees Vasudeva. Even bodies, misused bodies. Darkened consciousness. There also he sees. So after you see that, where is the... The whole thing changes. That's why it's called a reversal of consciousness. So here I am like looking at it uh, from the journey of yoga. But one can look at it simply that, you know, it's describing the change of seasons, nine months, followed by the mother's work, birth, which is perfectly fine. But always such poetry works on very different levels because poetry is about infinite suggestions. And when it is the Lord himself, <laughs> that's how Vedic poetry has been composed. So there are always many layers of suggestions and uh, one may get even more suggestions, different suggestions that the beauty of Savitri. So this is a good moment to say when people say, oh, your explanations of Savitri. I said, no, I'm just sharing my joy of Savitri. <laughs> to somebody else, it may come in a different way. It just is like a facilitating process. But then Savitri will reveal itself in countless ways. So In the nearly 60 years that I've been reading it, each time I've read it, there's a new revelation. Yes, absolutely. Everything opens up. A revel of color and of ecstasy. A hymn of rays, a litany of cries. A strain of choral priestly music sang and swung on the swaying censer of the trees. A sacrifice of perfume filled the hour. All nature is now engaged in yoga. Performing the sacrifice. Why? Because the Lord is coming. That's why she says that human beings will be perhaps the last to respond. Mm -hmm. So this life of simple uh, trees and plants and animals and simple people, they will be the first to respond. And then she causes uh, the difficulty is with those who consider themselves intellectual and who have worked much upon themselves. They are the most difficult people. Because they are all the time relying on their effort and the egoism that it involves. But those who are like simple, like children, that's I think Christ also said, you know, it's the meek and the weak who shall inherit the earth. So that is the state. So nature responds. Human beings may not come to know, but nature knows that who is going to come. <laughs> yes. I think the mother's birth herself was in a place where which was the backside of uh, one of the church and during the time she was born, I think 10-15 in the morning, there was a hymn going on inside the church. So everything is like chosen in such a beautiful way. This uh, word censor, the censor is um, a vessel that holds frankincense. Wow. And, and he says here, swung on the swaying censor of the trees. Ah. Beautiful. A sacrifice of perfume filled the hours. Ashoka's burned in crimson spots of flame. So Ashoka tree, I think we know what is the name given by the mother. Without grief. Without grief. Literally Ashok. It means without grief. So now that is the state of nature. And it's burning in crimson spots of flame. He's describing the leaves of the Ashoka tree. Yeah. Pure. Like the breath of an unstained desire, white jasmines haunted the enamored air. Pale mango blossoms fed the liquid voice of the love-maddened coil, and the brown bee muttered in fragrance mid the honey buds. So, uh, elsewhere, somewhere I have read that coil was a very favorite bird of Shiva. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and in many, even poems, you will find the reference. And of course, if you see that Shurbindo in his early years, formative years, lived in Kolkata, the eastern side of India, you will see here these love-maddened coils. 
Here also you hear, but oh, we sometimes. Hear them here. We yeah, do yeah. hear them here. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Auroville, of course, is everything. Yeah, but if you go, otherwise in India, primarily you go to Bihar, Jharkhand, Bengal and these places, you will hear this love madden quail and the mango <laughs> they are eating. It is feeding the liquid voice. So what is mango? Again, a symbol of divine knowledge. Yes. So it is, you know, making the voice filled with the sweetness. So at so many layers, uh, levels, this um, passage works. And the last two lines. The sunlight was a great God's golden smile. All nature was at beauty's festival. So this is the state in which one waits for the great coming. Nature is waiting for the descent of the Divine Mother, advent of the Divine Mother and what it means, the mystery of the Divine Birth, that is what Sri reveals now. In this high signal moment of the gods, answering earth's yearning and her cry for bliss, a greatness from our other countries came. So it is uh, one had re returned from the transcendent planes. So it is like that. She is coming from beyond the realms of mind, life and body. Other countries. These three yeah. we are familiar with. Those words, the greatness from our other, other countries, countries came. came. How beautiful. Oh. Is silence in the noise of earthly things. This is one of the things which strikes even now everyone despite everything. You go to Shurmindo's room and, you know, sit near the Samadhi. It's so strange that there is a silence which one feels so palpable. And when all the people are coming and going, I mean, you have to be too close not to yes. hear it. Yesterday I had this strange experience that I, I was going to sit at my place. I saw this lady very angry. You could see that she's full of, you know, anger. So uh, she probably has come, you know, she doesn't know anything, anybody. So I went and sat there and every day I put my phone on silent. But that day I had forgotten. So, you know, <laughs> the message came. So I took out and just, you know, put on the silent and put it inside. Why are you disturbing? <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm so sorry. I had forgotten. So I have put it on silent. No, no, you are disturbing. I said, excuse me, technically I am not disturbing. My phone is ringing and you are disturbed. So, you know, probably you are disturbed. <laughs> I said, you know, technically. I said, technically I am not disturbing you. <laughs> so again, no, no, no. You all come and you keep the phone on. I said, see, it has happened. Anyways, be at peace, be at peace. No, no, you go away from here. I oh. said, <laughs> I said, look, you know, I have not come to go away. But anyway, <laughs> she said, then she came up with the, I am going to complain. I said, yes, please. That is <laughs> Thank you so much. So I closed my eyes. And just around the time she got up, she must have complained. And sure enough, somebody came all the way. So all that I heard is because I was still going, you know, deep inside. Uh, I heard, oh, Alok bhai, oh, something she must have told, Achha, bat ne don go, chup chap. <laughs> but it was wonderful sometimes, you know, our inner state. But otherwise, generally, come to the ashram, walk inside, at the samadhi, in Sharabindu's room, even few moments, there is such a palpable silence. So imagine when the mother is coming, whole nature must have been filled with silence. Who is coming? Who is coming? Ah, she has come. It must be celebrating. High signal moment of the yes, gods. Yes, yes. Immutably reveal the secret word. The silence in the noise of earthly things. Secret word. Like a mantra probably chanting. The vibrations, oh here she is. Ma, 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 who knows. A mightier influx filled the oblivious clay. A lamp was lit a sacred image made. So this is the way divine birth takes place. That suddenly that body which has been formed in a special way, the divine prepares the body. And I have heard somewhere that during the last six months is quite likely. I personally feel, yes, it must have happened. Mm. So when mother used to be, you know, often uh, what, what we would ignorantly call as groaning and in intense pain. So... Uh, it is said that the mother was returning all these elements she had taken from nature. Mahasaraswati had gathered 
Now imagine what kind of body it must have been that at one point of time she decided that you know why can't this body grow by my will. So she says at night I slept <coughs> and she just put a pressure of the will to grow tall. Next morning she was one inch tall. Her frock had become short. Another time when she has to see that how the body can. So there is a 15 feet long floor and she wants to cross it in one single. So she leap one step and then the second one she is out. So all these kind of things the very body was you know made in such a way. That's why should have been the said that you know uh, if one of us has to withdraw I will withdraw because you have to fulfill the yoga of transformation because your body is prepared much better than mine. So it's a body which has been prepared in this way. And yet when she asked the Lord why it couldn't be done he hmm. was silent. Yes. Lord, because he, he yes. had to step behind and do what had to be done behind. And had he revealed to mother, yes. she would not let him go. So there was a time when the mother actually moved away and she said, okay, tell me when the hour has come. Yes. Because if she was standing and he just wouldn't withdraw. So <laughs> it was, it's a mystery of the divine play. But she knew that she had to leave. Yes. yes. So he yes, couldn't She withdraw. knew he had to leave and that was the need of the work. And he was with Champaklau. And kissing Champaklau. Embracing him. Embracing him. So what it must have been. So this is the divine advent. A lamp was lit. A sacred image made. So the form of the divine mother even as a child. It is a divine form. It is a sacred image. It is not just a body. But something very special. And that is why we are told to meditate upon the form of the divine mother. Even on a photograph, because it's not just any form where there is a divine presence inside, but a form specially built for the manifestation and expression of the divine within. A mediating ray had touched the earth, bridging the gulf between man's mind and God's. Its brightness linked our transience to the unknown. She has come as a bridge between matter and the highest regions. Few more lines, then we'll stop. A spirit of its celestial source aware, translating heaven into a human shape, descended into earth's imperfect mold and wept not fallen to mortality, but looked on all with large and tranquil eyes. See, this is the difference between a so-called traditional master, yogi, they think taking a human body is a bondage. You know, even a great mystic like Kabir, he is truly a great mystic, he declares that jab jag hasa ham roye. People were very happy, a child is born. But he was crying. He was crying because he has fallen to mortality. But here, she is not weeping. This is the work she has come to do. But looks on all with large and tranquil eyes. I think we'll stop here. So tomorrow will be the last day for the moment because I'll be going out next week for nearly 10-12 days till 15th December.